and welcome back. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Easy to talk about, but as we've been discussing, getting them into a form where the computer will do what you want can be tricky. The order that you test things in can make a difference, as we've seen. If we test things in the wrong way, then we can end up making the wrong decisions. Let's go back to the example in the overview to see if we should take our umbrella to work. It's not actually quite as simple as, is it raining, because we know that we will also want our umbrella if we think it's going to rain later. So if we break this down, our logic is, I will take my umbrella if it's already raining, or if I think it's going to rain later. That or is a powerful word, and it's what we formally call a Boolean operator. A Boolean operator is a way of combining two things that could be true or false to give us a single true or false answer. Remember that a condition needs to be able to be determined to be true or false so that the computer knows whether it executes the statements in the curly braces or not. We've already seen the use of else if, which we can also use to describe the current situation. So let's see what it looks like in that form. But you can see that we've repeated the instruction to take the umbrella in two places. If we can use that OR operator we've talked about, then we can check to see if it's raining or if it might rain later in the same line. You might hear this called a compound condition, but it's still a condition. Instead of using the word OR, processing uses the double pipe characters to indicate that you want to use the OR operator. That symbol is called the pipe or vertical bar and is usually found above the backslash on the far right of your keyboard. Don't use a lowercase l or a 1 as it won't work. Let's look carefully at that top line. We know that we need to end up with something that is true or false when we're using a condition, and we write a condition by enclosing the test in parentheses. The OR needs to evaluate two conditions and then return a single value, so the original conditions are in parentheses, and then we put extra ones around them and the OR to clearly indicate where the condition is. Looking at the code above, can you guess how OR decides to return true or false? When would you like to have your umbrella? When either one of the two things is true. You want it if it's raining, or it might rain later. Formally, we say that OR returns true if either or both of the conditions tested are true. The only reason that you wouldn't take your umbrella is if both are false. Let's look at some actual graphics code from the last example. Now let's say we only want to draw the lines if the value of i is divisible by 2. We then get this image. But what if we wanted only those values where i was divisible by 2 or 3? Let's look at what we get. Hmm, is this what you were expecting? Let's change our code so we print all of the lines, but we highlight the ones divisible by 2 and 3 in red. That gives us a much clearer idea of what's going on. We would expect that our program will only print a red rectangle when i is divisible by 2 or 3. When we see this, we realize that the rectangles in black are for i equals 1, 5, and 7, which is right, but had you realized that the smallest rectangle, the dot in the center, is for the largest value of i?